So now I know you don't do this alone. Let's no. give, let's give our parents some other names, some other people to go to. Um, so if there's any concerns with their child, who are other people in the team that you may pull in or who may be the first point of contact that a parent needs to ask and voice concerns before they even get to you? Let's kind of talk about that hierarchy. Well, of course, typically the teacher. Um, mm -hmm. You would, I would um, recommend having a parent-teacher conference at first okay. and address any concerns, whether they're academic or behavioral concerns, with the teacher. Okay. And if at that point your questions are answered or you don't see a change or any improvement, the next person would be the school guidance counselor. Okay. And he or she would sit down with you, answer questions, and help you determine whether or not additional services or evaluations may be needed and or refer you to the right person or individual okay and then from there sometimes you know evaluations are needed and they contact correct. you or from correct there. typically um what happens now is what's known as mtss okay and that stands for a multi-tiered system of support awesome. and whether it's behavioral in nature or academic in nature there's a process that all students should go through because what we don't want to do is mislabel a student yes. and give them services too early that maybe we could have put some strategies or interventions in place and they wouldn't have needed that label. So the first thing that he or she meeting the guidance counselor and our teacher may say, well, maybe we need to look at our multi-tier system of support and start the tier process. Okay. Um, there are three tiers. And every student in the school um, is on tier one. Those are the general interventions that every student will receive entering the classroom or entering the school. If the teacher or the parent finds that the student is not being successful academically and or behaviorally with those strategies for the general education population, then they look at tier two supports, okay. wherein they may um, be pulled for small groups. Um, they may, whether it's academic groups or behavioral groups, teaching social skills, but they attempt those strategies first, small group setting. Um, usually it's within the classroom, pulled to the side. Sometimes it's a pullout in small group. Okay. If that isn't successful, then they move on to tier three. In tier three supports, it's more individualized um, intervention um, put in place. Again, whether it's academic or behavioral in nature, it's more one-on-one -on -one or one-to-two, um, more increased supports in the classroom to address the behaviors, maybe even an individualized behavior plan okay. to meet that student's need if it is a behavioral issue. Um, once that's completed, if there's still no success um, or very little improvement, that's when you move to the student study team, you come in for a meeting, you discuss the issues or the challenges your child is facing and your concerns. Mm -hmm. And then as a team, and a parent is always a part of that team, That's right. they can't do anything without the parent's permission. So what they do is they meet with you and you guys figure out, hey, do we need to look at an evaluation? Mm -hmm. Does my child have a learning disability? Is there a behavioral disorder? Okay. What can we do? And that's when it's determined whether or not an evaluation would need to take place. They can never do that without your permission. Right. You must sign permission for an evaluation. And once that process is started, then they have 60 days, okay. 60 days to complete the evaluation. Awesome. If, it is, if it's gifted testing, it's 90 days. Okay. okay. Now... You said a mouthful. That was yeah. a lot of information, <laughs> and it was awesome. And so I want you guys to replay that, replay that, listen to it again. We're going to take that little clip right there and put it on YouTube so you can have it and listen to it as much as you want to because there, were a lot of, there was a lot of information, a lot of steps in there. But this, I often find that's the barrier. Yes. Um, it seems simple to me. But you kind of get, it's like drinking from a, a water hose. You just get drowned with yes. a lot of information. And so the message I think to parents is, if there's a concern, like you said, talk to your teacher. If you feel like you don't get anywhere there, go to your guidance counselor. If yes. you don't feel like you get anywhere there, where would they go next? Then they would request a student study team meeting. Um, and or meeting with the principal. Okay. That would probably be the first step before student study because typically when you come to the table for a student study team meeting, okay. and please let me say different counties call it different yes. things. 
Okay. So if you go in and say, well, I need a student study team meeting, right. they may look at you like, what are you talking are you about? Ha- okay. They'll get the gist. Yeah. But um, where I work, we call it a student study yeah. team meeting. But before that step, you may want to involve the principal and yes. or assistant principal okay. um, in the meeting with the teacher and the guidance counselor to see if you can get your questions answered um, or your child's needs met at that point. If not, then the student study team is going to be pretty much the final step because then you, you're talking about um, a possible evaluation um, for your child. Okay, that is so important because that's what I get in my office. They just don't know where to go, what to do. It's all so confusing. Right. So basic, basic, your teacher, your guidance counselor, uh, and one of the principal's assistant principal, principal. And Correct. this is general information. Again, I want to say we are in a particular state. The language may be different in another state, a different county, a different city. But right. you know how to ask for help. That's the point of this message. Ask yeah. for help. Okay? Yes. So if you're getting called three times a week about something your child is doing, if your child is failing or near failing um, academically, anything is subpar or not going the way that you think it should or you're getting that feedback from the teacher, then you need to be asking for help. Well, what can we do? If you're telling me there's problems, what do we do? What can I do at home? And what do we do here at school? And what are those steps I need to take? And that's starting with the teacher, going to your guidance counselor, and then they'll move you up from there. Right. That's, that's the basic gist of it, right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. And there's so, one thing, mm-hmm. one additional thing I want to share. Um, oftentimes, each school typically has a school social worker. Yeah. And oftentimes, when the social worker gets involved, parents step back. I don't want the social mm-hmm. worker involved. It's not the typical social worker that you see working with the state from a DCF type call. Right. The, our social workers are there to help and to support the student and the parent. So don't put up a barrier or put your guard up when you hear, oh, well, maybe social the social worker, worker can yeah. help with that. Because yeah. oftentimes the social worker is one of the greatest resources right. as far as services within the community that a parent can have. Right. They're there to help you, not to um, put you on a microscope yes. and judge you and find things that, you you know, blame you for something. Correct. Absolutely. And yeah. then that transcends the school because I do have, I work in a very, um, I would say, healthcare shortage area, area with a lower socioeconomic status of patients. And the educational level may not be there. The needs aren't all being met. There's a lot of uh, social or domestic Uh, problems and concerns and I do hear sometimes that there are wonderful programs coming out of the schools to assist parents with everything from paying bills and getting food and transportation and all of those things so it's nothing wrong with saying I need help with anything I mean what do they say about asking asking it shall be given (laughs) (laughs) absolutely especially for our kids I mean you have to That's right. That's right. So that was a good point to also um, be open to uh, receiving help from the social worker and asking for help with the social worker. 